morning. How are you all this morning? It's great to have you here. Uh, I'm Pastor Jeff Lilly. This is uh, Pastor Bree Lloyd. We welcome you for worship this morning at Lutheran Church of Honolulu. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. We'll remind you, especially with the COVID surges that we're having at the moment, try to keep your uh, distancing. We have plenty of room here in the church to do so. So please try to keep your distancing throughout our service and please remember to keep your mask on for the entire time that you're here as well. We welcome you. Uh, we are heading into our Christmas season. Um, we are unsure at this time, given what's happening with COVID, what our worship will look like. We'll be making some decisions in the next couple of days. Um, we're not sure if we're going to be able to have live services or not. We have to do what's right and careful for the greater community and for ourselves. So we'll do whatever we can. We'll make that decision the next day or so. Regardless of what decision we make, we promise you we will have joyful and wonderful worship. You may just be able to do it in your pajamas at home, <laughs> surrounded by all the Christmas presents, because I think this is the year everyone gets a free iPad because <laughs> of COVID. Right, kids? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to start that up. Let's begin our worship this morning as we listen to the prelude. Please rise as you're able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who shapes the whole creation, who comes with might and mercy, who fills the hungry with good things. Let us approach the throne of grace with repentant hearts. Faithful God, we confess that we have been unfaithful to you like dry leaves and withered grass. Our lives are blown about us by our sins and the powers of evil surround us. Restore us, O God. Let the light of your face shine on us and we shall be saved. God is patient, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you this good news. You are free from all that imprisons you. Your sins are forgiven. God heals your broken hearts. Live in peace and harmony as you wait for the day of God. Our gathering hymn is, My soul proclaims your greatness. 
ELW251. Let us join in the blessing of the Advent wreath. We praise you, O God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, open our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your Advent among us in the Word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose the coming is certain and the whole draws near. And let us sing together all four verses of Light One Candle. Siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the word. A reading from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are the one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Holy wisdom, holy word. From Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Word of God, word of life.
Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. About 10 years ago, the Lutheran pastor and author Nadia Boltz Weber posted a sermon on Mary in which she included these musings. I know people get hung up on believing the virgin birth thing, but for me, the harder thing to believe was that the angel Gabriel actually found someone to say yes. I've always wondered if there were like a VH1 behind the music special about Mary, if we'd finally learn the whole story. Like how many girls said no that night before Angel Gabriel found one who would finally say yes. And the rest of her sermon is a thoughtful word on what kind of blessedness Mary was in for. A journey of parenthood that would eventually end in witnessing the excruciating treatment and death of her child. What kind of yes are we in for this Christmas, if we are in for any yes at all? And are we up for the journey? The journey may likely lead, as Boltz Weber notes, somewhere between the sentimentality of a marketed Christmas and the cynicism of an unbelievable one. Where will yes take us the days, as the days diminish still in their light? as we enter these darkest days of the year. Yes is a word that therapists and counselors the country over in the last few years have counseled us to use cautiously. Time and energy for many of us can be spherically pulled in so many different directions of different important causes or in the maintenance of relationships that can now extend around the globe. And perhaps this is even more true over the holidays. Saying no can be necessary to tend the ever precious and sacred time with family or dear friends, or even in solitude, time with ourselves. It can be difficult to sort amidst the frenetic energy of these days the sacred invitations that call from the deep and that offer us a chance to respond. No can be necessary to these kind of intentional and sacred yeses. The divine is moving among us. Where will our response to it take us? Mary's Magnificat may offer a clue. Her young adult response was a recognition of the sacred's relationship to the hungry, the poor, the broken, the hurting. 
How astute sometimes are young hearts and minds. Mary was not the only pregnant prophet who reminded people of faith of this relationship between God and the hurting, however. Hundreds of years earlier, the mother of Samuel, Hannah, offered a similar prayer. My heart exalts the Lord, she prayed after her son, Samuel, who would become a prophet, was born. She prayed, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many is forlorn. The God revealed in scripture attends to the humble, the broken, and the hurting. So about, um, about four years ago, my spouse uh, bought me this t-shirt from the Episcopal Relief and Development. It's, uh, uh, they were selling them to support the Women's March in D.C. in January 2017, and it was when I'm with her was used as a political slogan. And here the same phrase rests above a print of the Virgin of Guadalupe with the spirit... Oh. Here the same phrase rests above a print of the Virgin of Guadalupe with the spirit of Mary and Hannah's prayers on the back, cast down the mighty from their thrones and lift up the lowly. Uh, a friend recently shared with me a poem by the, by the poet and blogger Malcolm White. It's titled The Visitation, and it, it carries the themes of these women prophets and their small and courageous yeses. And it goes like this. Here is a meeting made of hidden joys of lightnings cloistered in a narrow place. From quiet hearts, the sudden flame of praise, and in the womb, the quickening kick of grace. Two women on the very edge of things, unnoticed and unknown to men of power, but in their flesh, the hidden spirit sings, and in their lives, the buds of blessing flower. And Mary stands with all we call too young. Elizabeth with all called past their prime. They sing today for all the great unsung. Women who turned eternity to time. Favored of heaven, outcast on the earth. Prophets who bring the best in us to birth. Amidst the whisperings between women through history, these often secondary characters, comes the sense of what saying yes to the divine entails. The lowly and forgotten are lifted up. They are seen. The hungry are fed. We care for the broken among us. The Virgin of Guadalupe, Mary, Hannah, Elizabeth, they all testify. This week, the feminist educator, Bell Hooks, died. She was an academic visionary who offered a different and more whole way of teaching. She was vocal in her critique of academic culture that devalued and shamed marginal voices and marginal ways of knowing. Hers was a voice that wanted black and female student experience to be seen for learning culture to include these experiences among all others. But she set this de desire in a larger vision. In one of her books, Teaching Community, she wrote this. Our senses are assaulted by the stench of domination every day, here in the places where we live. No wonder then that so many people feel terribly confused, uncertain, and without hope. Despair is the greatest threat. When despair prevails, we cannot create life-sustaining communities of resistance. Paulo Freira, she quoted, reminds us that without a vision for tomorrow, hope is impossible. Perhaps this is the yes that Mary spoke into being and into which we are called this season. 
one that rises from all that may bury us in despair, and there is much of it. An ascent to a holy vision and the courage to not give up. There is a vision of beloved community yet unfolding. Though we may not know how or what exactly, God is still in the midst. Don't give up. Years ago, I had entered an intentional community in search of a deeper sense of God's presence. It was at a time when much of what I felt was God's silence and absence, when I was confused that I knew God or what, I, what was meant by that term God at all. The community was a group of people held together by their vulnerability, the distinction of ability and disability blurred. The night that I arrived, I turned off the lights to the room I had in this shared house. When I lay down above me, someone had carefully placed glow-in-the-dark stickers. Shining above me in that green glow was simply the word, yes. There was something incredibly symbolic about an affirmation that shone faintly amidst this very dark night. I have seen your own lives testify in different ways. Our incredibly talented organist, Mark Wong, has said yes to another journey. And this is his official last Sunday as our organist, though not a goodbye, <laughs> as he begins another vocational call to help in the restoration of the organ to which he listened to as a child at his home congregation. We celebrate his time with us, the talent that he has shared, and we send him off with care in this next step of his own journey, a going home of sorts. What kind of yes are you in for this Christmas? What kind of yes am I in for? What kind of yes are we in for together? God comes yet, always to the broken and the vulnerable. Don't give up. Amen. Hymn of the day, ELW 241.
Creeds are our way as God's people of remembering together whose we are. Let's join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this, go ahead. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. The church's gifts and ministries for service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O oh God. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O oh God. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that bring forth abundant life. Hear us, O oh God. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort any struggling with infertility, those who await test results or who are in treatment and hospice care, and others in need. We continue to lift up those suffering from the devastation of the tornadoes in Kentucky. And we pray here especially for Anita and Melissa, Bill, friends and family of Billy, Bruce, Colleen, Greg, Ilsa, Jonathan, Judy, Kai and his family, Karen and Richard, Kathy, Kavai, Keahi, Kendra, Lori, Michael, Miles, Patricia, Pomai, Ressi, Samantha, Ted, Tom, and William. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, you stir up in the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, are courageous in their witness. Give us you fulfill all things. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's safely share that peace of Christ with one another. God's peace. Now, if you're a couple, it's okay to shake hands or anything. That's fine. <laughs> All the same family. That's fine. Our offerings are the way that we return uh, to God what God has first given us. For those that are here in the sanctuary, we'll invite you to drop your offering in the calabash at the back on your way out. For everyone else, you know what to do. Let's hear the offertory anthem.
You may remain seated. Let us pray. God of abundance, God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Come among us now through your Spirit and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Please rise for the Lord's Prayer. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you and I may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is Joy to the World, number 267. For those of you who wonder, it is actually an Advent hymn. <laughs> Just holding my own.
that was terrible. Sit down. <laughs> Mr. Mark Wong, if you could join us up here. That may be a bigger if. This is not Mark's last Sunday. Mark will be here till January 6th. But we wanted to have a Godspeed and farewell while you all were here. And also given what's happening with COVID, we don't know what's going to happen. So we thought, strike while the mark is hot. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. It's mark, as you leave our community of faith at LCH, we wish to bid you farewell. The Lord said, I am going to send an angel in front of you to guide you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. And from Isaiah, the, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, Mark Wong, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant Mark, who has enriched this community and shared his gifts with all of us. Now bless and preserve him at this time of transition. Day by day, guide him and give him everything that is needed. Friends who continue to cheer his way and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling him. By your Holy Spirit, be present in his pilgrimage that he may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Mark, you came to us nine years ago, over nine years ago, and um, you have been such an incredible part of our community here. Um, I've only been in three calls, which means I only had to endure three organists, well, four, um, all together, huh? five. <laughs> I don't know who that speaks mostly about, but probably me, but um, I will say I have so much enjoyed working with you. Mark, for those of you who don't know, um, generally in, in the church, the toughest relationship in the staff is either between the pastor and the organist or the pastor and the music director. That's just true. And that's where the battles are wrought. Never a battle. Mark is the only organist that I've ever had who, if we said, could you play that a little more slowly? didn't reply, I decide the pace. <laughs> or if I asked, would you mind if, we, if, if Scott would say, hey, we're going to change this hymn this morning, didn't say, well, I practiced earlier something else. Mark would just say, sure. What a gift. The other thing about Mark that I have loved is that his passion is not for performing, but for leading you in worship. And what a gift that has been. And I want to thank Mark for all that he's done for us. And so as we say farewell, we're sending him off to St. Andrew's Episcopal Cathedral. From the Lutheran Cathedral to the Episcopal Cathedral. <laughs> it's a step up that we don't mind. <laughs> Although we will miss you so much. There's so many great opportunities coming your way. I want to give you a moment to speak here after we put lay on you. So let us thank Mark for his time with us. Careful. <laughs> Don't let you fall on your last day. 
Well, as Jeff said, it's um, been just about nine years. Um, I got a call from Kathy Crozier asking for me to fill in at uh, Christmas time 2012, and here, here we are nine years later. Um, I think it's entirely appropriate, the, the readings we had today, because I was not even thinking of the cathedral job or any other job, and I, I truly did have a calling, um, which I just couldn't refuse. I kind of felt like I was being pushed without, <laughs> not, from me. not from him, but, but from above. Uh, the, the signs were just basically hitting me on the head that um, I needed to return to the church where uh, I was baptized more than 50 years ago and where I learned to play the organ and where my husband has started singing the choir there over 40 years ago. But um, my late father, um, as, as he was getting ready to leave this world, um, asked that all memorial gifts go, uh, would go to rebuild the organ there. So when this job uh, required the new organist to take up that project and rebuild the organ, I knew I had to answer. So thank you very much. Um, I don't feel like I've led you in, in worship. Uh, this is the most incredible singing congregation. And uh, it has been such a pleasure being able to play hymns and for the, for the congregation and to accompany this fabulous choir and work with people like Jeff and Scott and before that, Miguel, Jeremy. Uh, we've just had some incredible experiences uh, over these past nine years and uh, I'm not leaving this community I'm just uh, moving down the street and these two churches work together very closely and I hope that we will actually be able to to strengthen that and do more in the coming years so um, Guy will be coming along with me and, and returning to the choir where he started under John McCreary and uh, we hope to be doing a lot of joint programs together Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs> Almighty God, bless us and direct our days and our deeds in peace. Amen. Let's hear the postlude. Yeah, back to work, Mark. Go in peace, share the good news, 
Thanks be to God. Um, um, what's your name again? Scott. Scott, that's the one. Scott has a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Mark will be playing our Bach and prayer service this Wednesday. It's uh, going to be an in-person service, so f uh, in unless we, as far as we know. So please come and join us for that time. It's a meditative time of prayer, and Mark will play three selections that he's chosen for uh, the season of Advent. Um, we really hope you can join us. And then tonight we have a special Compline at 7.30. You can catch it on the live stream, or you can come in person. We've got a really great choir tonight singing some beautiful music. And uh, we hope to see you at all the Christmas services. Christmas Eve, 5 o'clock. Christmas Eve, 7.30. Christmas, Christmas morning, 10 a.m. And Lessons in Carols, 10 a.m. And then German Vespers on the 6th. It's a whole plethora. <laughs> it's a bonanza of Christmas services. Thank you for being here this morning. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.